Good evening to one and all. On behalf of Bridge Builders, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to each one of you to this uplifting evening called The Precious Pearls, Reflections on the Virtues of Sister Shanti. Sister Shanti, truly a child of God, was enriched soul with virtues galore. She was so blessed by beloved Sadhu Aswani that she became a blessing to those around her. For Shanti, faith in the master was as natural as breathing. She had a soul of a child and the heart of a mother. Her life was her message. Bridge builders today take this opportunity to reflect upon the blissfully beautiful life of Sister Shanti. I call upon my co-host Vanshika Manglani to take you through this journey of love, light and peace. Thank you. Good evening friends. Pearl, the only gem created by a living creature. A jewel known to be very rare, fine, admirable and valuable. From the courts of ancient emperors to the celebrities of today, Pearls have been adored as a sign of royalty, beauty, and grace. But pearls don't just bottle down to jewels to adorn the physical beauty. They don't just limit themselves as a status symbol. They don't just belong to a strata of people who can afford them. Pearls can be possessed by all, emulated by all adorning a person much beyond the beauty we know of. Yes, today we are here to share with you about pearls, the rarest and the most valuable virtuous jewels of a person that enriches their soul and spreads the fragrance of their inner beauty to the upliftment of humanity. Today we are here to reflect upon an adored soul endowed with virtues even more precious and priceless than pearls. She is none other than our dearest sister Shanti. <laughs> sister Shanti was a unique child, born with a smile, unlike other children who cry out at the time of birth. Her smile was so striking, so magnetic, that those who came to see her wondered on the beautiful smile on her face, which was pure and fair beyond compare. Just like the beauty of pearl keeps shining even after the death of the oyster, Sister Shanti's face wore an incessant smile even till the last day of her earth pilgrimage, even in the face of death. She smiled. Sakiri me tu rang rang gayi sham rang ni. Sakiri me tu rang rang gayi sham rang ni. Sakiri me tu rang rang gayi sham rang ni. Sham rang ni. Sham rang ni. Sham rang. Sakiri me 
rightly said that he who would search for pearls must dive below. Only when we dive deeper and deeper into ourselves, we find pearls that are beyond price. At birth, Sister Shanti was named Gomti, which is the name of the sacred river. And in the heart of this child was the longing of the river to lose itself and merge into the sea. She too longed to be merged in the beloved. Mere dil mein tu hai tu hai dil ki dawa kya karu Mere dil mein tu hai tu hai dil ki dawa kya karu Dil bhi tu hai ja bhi tu hai kuch bhi fida kya karu
Beloved Master Sadhu T. L. Vaswani told Shanti, Never forget, Shanti, remember the one lesson that to live is to give, to live is to love, to live is to serve, to live is to share, your all with all, to live is to bear the burden of others. Dearest Dada, J.P. Vaswani said, that the secret of Shanti's life was that she had a heart. She had a heart which flowed in sympathy to all who suffered and were in pain. She had a heart which vibrated in sympathy with the suffering ones, so much that she regarded the suffering of others as her own. Indeed, Sister Shanti's life was a moving picture of service in action. She would not rest until she had given relief to those who came to her in suffering and pain. Her love moved out to the poor and needy, to the depressed and outcast. They are not apart from me. They are a part of me, she said. <laughs> Me, who 
stands for grace and beauty it enhances the beauty of one and all without differentiating who the wearer is similarly sister shanti was an embodiment of equality and equanimity she firmly believed in reverence for all life she was kind to everyone ants and insects little ones and voiceless ones sinners and saints Sinner, she said, is a man who has made a wrong turning. Give him time and he will come back. She never asked, who are you? She only inquired, what is your need? Sister Shanti was a lover of silence. She spent hours together in a silent corner, repeating the holy name, tears trickling down her cheeks. The prayer that she uttered was, O oh Lord, I want to realize Thee in this very birth. Show me the way or put me into contact with someone who may indicate to me the way that leadeth to Thee. She came into contact with beloved Sadhu T.L. Vaswani when she was only 10 years old and soon she was accepted by Sadhu Vaswani as his spiritual daughter thus acquiring the name Shanti T. Vaswani. Revered Dada J.P. Vaswani shares that as the needle of the compass always points towards the north, her heart was ever turned to the Lord. For her to live was to serve him, to love him, to draw nearer and ever more near to him in utter devotion and self-surrender. She adored him as the beloved of her heart. She basked in the sunshine of his love and grace until she herself became a picture of compassion. <laughs>
In the life of a pilgrim, there are three stages. Stage one, of a seeker. Stage two, that of a disciple. And the final stage, when the disciple puts into practice the teachings of the master. Yes, Shanti Didi reached the ultimate stage by adorning her persona with pearls we just spoke of. In fact, her beauty was just not limited to pearls. Her pearl-like virtues were rarest of the rare, more precious than the most precious jewels, purer than the purest of the gems. Her beauty was much beyond the confinement of our words and expressions. She emblazed in the necklace of these precious pearl-like qualities that enhances the beauty of the Sadhu Vaswani mission even today. And their fragrance will linger on forever and ever in our hearts. The smile of this smiling princess will never fade away. Thank you. Thank you, Wanshika. After the soul-stirring journey of Sister Shanti, it's time to move on to the next segment of today's evening. As beloved Dada says, what is the best exercise for the heart? Reach down and lift up as many as you can. And this is an exercise that the volunteers practice the best. In fact, volunteering is the ultimate exercise in democracy. You vote in elections once in a year, but when you volunteer, you vote every day about the kind of community you want to live in. The contribution of every volunteer is the reason behind all the action at Bridge Builders Pune. No act is small or big, and each act is recorded in the golden books of the angels, as Dada says. But in the same breath, I would like to mention that there are few blessed ones who have made significant contribution for the growth of this group. We would like to acknowledge their efforts today by offering them a token of appreciation. The first award is for the best female volunteer for the year 2011-2012. 
Her voice captivates each soul in the satsang hall. Her movie making abilities have moved many. Her selfless service at such a young age is an inspiration to many around her. This aptly makes her the best volunteer for the year 2011-2012. Any guesses? So the best female volunteer for the year 2011-2012 at Bridge Builders Pune goes to Miss Neha Nagrani. I would like to call upon our dearest brother Sunil Motiani from Dubai to kindly give her the token of appreciation. Can we have a big round of applause for her please? They say for volunteering, you don't need the time, you just need a heart. And she indeed has the right kind of heart for volunteering. She says she wants to say two lines. I just like to say I don't deserve this at all. It's Dada who works through us. We are just instruments, and I really, I mean, whatever I do, it's it's Krishna Arpanam, it's Dada Arpanam. So I really don't deserve this. A round of applause only for Dada and only for Dada, not for me. The second category is for the best male volunteer for the year 2011-2012. An ever smiling, ever ready, soft spoken and humble young bridge builder. Favorite of everyone. He is lovingly known as Fool. And yes, indeed he is a fragrant rose in beloved Dada's garden. The unanimous choice for the best volu male volunteer for the year 2011-2012 goes to Mr. Naveen Nankani. May I call Sunil uncle to come again and kindly give him a big award? They say that volunteers don't need to pay no don't need to be paid not because they are worthless because they are priceless and indeed Naveen is a priceless volunteer at Bridge Builders Pune. Dada Sham, Dada Sham, Dada Sham, Hari Krishna, Hari Ram, Dada Sham, Dada Sham, Dada Sham, Dada Sham, Hari Krishna, Hari Ram, Dada Sham, Hari Krishna, Hari Ram, Dada Sham. Dear brothers and sisters, it is such a joy to be in your midst this evening. My first word is a word of gratitude. I feel grateful to the organizers of this evening's beautiful meeting. I feel grateful to them for having called me here and given me an opportunity of associating myself with a function which I value highly. As you all know, we are met together this evening to offer the homage of our hearts to one who all homage deserves. Sister Shanti was a truly radiant soul. She had complete faith in God and the Guru her life was one of total surrender to the divine will in complete humility and devotion. The name of God was in her heart all the time. And her hands were ever busy giving relief to those in suffering and pain. Hers was truly a dedicated life. She had no worldly ambitions. She shunned 
the glare and glaze of life and lived a hidden life in the hidden God. Her heart was free from all taint of evil. She served the poor and needy with singular devotion. Her teaching in brief was clasp God to your heart and give the service of love to all who suffer and are in pain. I bow down to her sacred memory and seek her blessings. Friends, we are met together at a question-answer session and as I have repeatedly said to you, questions can be asked by anyone. Likewise, answers too can be given by anyone. Surely there will be some questions to which I may not be able to give adequate answers. And if at any time you find that you have a better answer to a question, than I have given, kindly don't hesitate to ask for the mic. The mic will come to you and nothing will make me happier than to bid you goodbye. After having been enlightened by your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience. Question number one. Good evening, Dada. Good I evening to you. I think the first question that all of us would like to ask you is, how are you feeling today? I, I'm feeling well enough. And to when me. can we see you in the satsang hall? I beg your pardon? When can we see you in the satsang hall? I thought you were seeing me all the time. <laughs> Aren't you able to see me? Yes, Dada. Very right, well. Right, right. What you. we always see is only an image of an image. We don't see the real man. Our effort should be to see the real man. This body is only an image of an image. This body is only a garment that we have worn during our present incarnation. This body is only a house in which we have come and dwelt for the time being. This body is only a jacket that we have worn. It is our present address. The real man is not this body. Question number one. Dearest Dada, what does spirituality really mean? Spirituality means that we are not these bodies that we wear, that each one of us is an immortal soul. This is something that we have forgotten through our endless adventure of existence as we have worn and put away myriad bodies. We have forgotten that each one of us is essentially an immortal soul. Spirituality is only knowledge of that immortal soul. Therefore spirituality begins with the question, what am I? What am I in reality? You all have heard the name of that great spiritual genius, Maharishi Raman. He used to tell his disciples, go and sit in a silent corner and put to yourself this one question, Koham, Koham, Koham. Koham means, what am I? What am I? Out of the very depths of silence, 
when you touch that depth of silence, out of the very depths will come the answer. So hum, so hum, so hum, I am that. So hum, I am that. I am not this body that I have owned. This is perhaps the greatest blunder of man. Every one of us, we have identified ourselves with these bodies. If I were to ask you, who are you? You would immediately point to the body. You are not the bodies that you wear. If I were to ask you, who is J.P. Vaswani? You would point to this body. I am not this body. I am an immortal soul. And a knowledge of that immortal soul, that is spirituality. We have been given the human birth for this purpose, that we may realize that we are not bodies, we are immortal souls. This knowledge cannot come to us when we are in an animal body or in a plant body or in a stone body, in a metal body. We have passed through all these stages. Now we have come to the human body. It is only in the human body that we can realize the great truth that each one of us is an immortal soul. Thank you, Dada. Is there a relationship between science and wisdom? If yes, what is it? Science tells us so many things about the outer world, about the nature and its laws. Wisdom takes us within. Even as there is a whole universe outside of us, even so, there is a larger universe that is within us. That universe has its own laws. And a study of those laws is wisdom. And the very first question that wisdom answers is, what am I? Koham, koham, koham. An answer to which is, soham, soham, soham. Thank you, Dada. If I have done something wrong and I repent doing it, what effect does it have on my karmic debts? Does repenting lessen my karmic debts? Does repenting? Lessen. Does it reduce? Lessen. It does. It does. It does. Especially if you, remain, if you repent immediately, it does lessen your karmic debt. Therefore, whenever you find that you have done something which you should not have done, something which is wrong, you must immediately repent and ask for forgiveness. If you can ask for forgiveness from the party whom you have wronged, your karmic debt is lessened by a significant portion. But if you can't do that, you should at least go within yourself and ask for forgiveness from God who is seated within the heart of each one of us. Dearest Dada, besides Gurudev Sadhu Vaswani, who has inspired you the most in your life? I think every one of you has inspired me. When you put questions to me, it is an inspiration to me. Every contact through which God makes me pass, 
every experience that I get is a source of inspiration. Because every experience comes to teach me a lesson which I need to learn. I often think of this earth as a school. In the school, experience is our teacher. Every experience that we get teaches us a lesson which we need to learn. And after we have learned that lesson, not in words, but in life, after we have learned that lesson, we graduate, we move on to a higher class. I feel grateful to every one of you for having been a source of inspiration to me. Thank you very much. Father, we want to thank you for giving us this opportunity of having a question answer session with you every month. Youth like me who live in such perplexed lives really need those simple and practical answers from you. They are the only guiding light of our lives. I am always at your service. I am your Shevak. Use me as you will. Dearest Dada, I often have nightmares and wake up terror stricken in the night. What could be the reason behind such happenings? Do you watch the TV for a long time every day? Do you read books which should not be read? What you do during the day has an influence on your life which you live at night because whatever you do during the day enters into the subconscious and it is the subconscious that throws dreams at night. Therefore be careful of what you do during the day. The thoughts that you think, the emotions that are evoked within you, the thoughts that you send out to others, all these things they shape your dreams at night. Therefore it is said that before you sleep, before you enter into the realm of sleep, you must think of God. Repeat God's name. If possible, sing a song which appeals to your heart and as you sink gradually slip into the realm of sleep you will have beautiful dreams take care of the life that you live during the day the conscious has an effect on the subconscious and dreams are a part of the subconscious. Thank you, Dada. Dada, how may we grow more and more in love with our fellow Sangat and Guru Bhais? The idea of the Sangat is that we should behold our Guru in every member of the Sangat. In every member of the Sangat, we should behold our Guru. The Guru is seated in the hearts of each one of us. Therefore it is said that the relationship which one Satsangi bears to another is deeper 
is greater than the relationship between a brother and a brother. When I meet a satsangi brother, I should feel as though I am meeting my guru. When I speak to him, I should feel as though I am speaking to my guru. When this becomes the principle of my life, I will keep on growing spiritually. Thank you, Dada. Beloved Dada, Today also, Gurudev Sadhu Vaswani gave us this teaching. He said, you must not see no satsangi brother, no one can be called a true satsangi if he sees faults in his satsangi brothers and sisters. A true satsangi always sees the good side of his satsangi brothers and sisters. And once we start seeing the good side of other people, we shall grow spiritually, automatically. Beloved Dada, is it necessary to do 108 recitations of Hanuman Chalisa or similar recitations even without understanding the meaning? Would a simple prayer from the heart be equally effective? It will be more effective. A simple prayer from the heart will be more effective. I think in the 15th century, someone who wished to remain anonymous wrote a beautiful book. The title of the book is The Cloud of Unknowing. The Cloud of Unknowing. In that book he says, God does not listen to the long unending prayers which we send to him. A one word prayer is enough. When you are in need of help, when you want somebody to come and give you strength, all you have to do is to offer the prayer, God, save me, save me, save me, save me. Long unending prayers have no effect. But a single word that comes out of the very depths of your heart, perhaps when it comes out of the depths of our heart, our eyes are touched with tears. That is the test. Such a prayer receives an immediate response from God. Thank you, Dada. The next question is, does alcoholism stunt your spiritual growth? If by alcoholism you mean drinking alcohol in a larger quantity then you can really be in control of then it does stunt your spiritual growth. Yes. If you take alcohol, you may take it, say, as a medicine. There are doctors who advise in certain diseases that you should take alcohol, but you should take it in those proper doses. You shouldn't go beyond the limit. It will affect your spiritual life. Thank you, Dada. The next question is, Dearest Dada, working with my senior co-worker, I have developed 
hatred towards that person. I put in the best of my efforts at work, but that person gets all the privileges. That person takes advantage of me many a times. What should I do? Should I tell my boss about it and ask for my share of privileges? I think if you, even if you tell your boss, you may not get the privileges that you are in quest of. Because your colleague in office is getting these privileges because of his karma. Whatever I am getting is the result of my karma. Therefore, the teaching that is given to us is that you should reform your karma. You should do your duty, not thinking of what others do to you or of what others are doing to others. In Hindi, the teaching given us is to apni to nibhai uski o jane. You don't have to consider what the other person is doing or what other person the other person is getting. You must do your duty. That way you are improving your karma for the action of today is the karma of tomorrow, even as the action of yesterday is the karma of today. Dearest Dada, can we be pleasure-seeking and spiritual both at the same time? If by pleasure-seeking you mean that you set out in search of ple pleasure, then the answer is no. But if pleasure comes to you unasked and you make use of it, the answer could be yes. Both the things could exist at the same time. Raja Janak lived in a palace. He had all the luxuries that any other king had. But in the heart within, he was a sannyasi. All you have to do is to have no attachment whatsoever in the heart within. Then you can do what you like. You must not be attached to pleasure. If you are not attached to pleasure, you will not seek pleasure. But if pleasure comes to you unasked, you will make use of it. If you don't get pleasure, you will not miss it. That is the test. Bhagirath was a king. A period came in his life when he went and lived in the forest, the life of an ascetic, the life of meditation, tapasya and prayer. Then again he was called to become a king. But when he came and sat on the throne, he said to his minister, keep my bed ready. Any time I may be called upon to go to the forest and live a life of meditation, I should not hesitate. So we do not have to go out in search of pleasure. 
But if pleasure comes to us unasked, we should make use of it. We should share it with others. We should make it an instrument of service. Dada, we have a question in Sindhi which uh, Nirmala Didi has very uh, graciously agreed to read out. Aryom Dada, Dada Baranji Tamam Ghani Chinta Thindi Aye. Baranji Tamam Ghani Chinta Thindi Aye. Ye Lagando Aye. Asake Santanjo Sangu Milio Aye. But Baranjo Janam Buddha Safal Thie. Fasla Sahikan. Galat Faslo Nakan. Manish Janam Safalkan. Om Shanti. एने करे जरूरी आए मां समझा तो तब आरण के नंदे हों दे ही तभी उन्हें जे कचरे निंदे जो नंदर प्रभु जे प्यार जाबे जो पोखियो दुखन दरे दरन गरीबन मिस्कीनन पसुन पक्षन जे शेवा जाबे जो पोखियो जरी बाहर आना नंदरा हैं Jadi baharan jo dil jo kacchi di wahan hain. Jadi baharan tamah ke budhan lai tiyar thiyan tha. Uho wakt unna jo tami faaydo watho. Po jay baharan vada thin da. Tiyan uhe bichay jay tamah po kya. Unnan jay dil jo nandar. Unnan maa gula nikran da. Unnan maa mewa nikran da. हिंयर ऐसा छाकियो है केतरन घरन में बारन के छड़े दोनों तो तो बार टीवी वेठा दसन या बार बिहतर रहता है जो वक्त पे आ गुजारी हैं उन्हें जो चरतर न थो ठहे चरतर ठहे तो जरी बार है ना नंदा है ने उम्र में नंदा है जब वड़ा थी था वन्यन दस हो जिए वन आए, जेकरे वन अन्या सैपलिंग आए, अन्या वन वन मा अन्या नंद्रो बूटो निकतो आए, तो उन बूटे के ऐसी कहरे व पासे वराई सकूं था, पर जेकरे ये कवारी वड़ो वन थी पियो, पो केत्रियों व क्रेन्स तमी खनी है चो, ऐ क्रेन्स सां तमी उन वन के मोरन चायो मोरे कौन सा करना? इन अकारे फायदो वटो जरी बाहर नंदा है ने अंग्रेजी में चाहना कैच देम यंग व्हेन दे आर यंग यू शुड सो इन देर हार्ट्स द सीड्स ऑफ कैरेक्टर चरित्र या बिज़ उन्हें जे कचरे इन दिल न दर पोखियो पर जरी वो ना नंदा है ने उन वक्त आसाने वज़्ज़ा है वड़ा थी वजन था आसान जी अथन का बाहर थी था वजन। Thank you, Dada. Dada, can we have one last question? Yes. Dearest Dada. Our last but one, if you like. Dearest Dada, how do we know if our guru is pleased with us and has accepted our offering to him? The Guru is pleased to us. He asks of us only one thing, that is obedience. Through obedience, we make our will His will. Our will gets identified with His will and He is pleased. Nothing else pleases him. Complete obedience. Ten out of ten. On this path, you score either ten out of ten or zero out of ten. There is no intermediate section. You don't score. Four, five, six, seven, 
eight out of ten. No, it is either ten out of ten or it is zero out of ten. Why? Because if the guru asks me to do ten things and I do eight things but refuse to do the remaining two things, I only have done the eight things which appeals to me. Therefore, I have obeyed myself. I have not obeyed the Guru. There are two things that I am not prepared to do, which he has asked me to do, just because they don't appeal to me. I become the master, not the Guru. The Guru is pleased only when we offer them implicit obedience. Thank you, Dada. Dearest Dadal, does the disciple's prayer have enough power to heal the Guru? Can a disciple take over the pain of the Guru? If yes, how? It is not easy for the disciple to take what he thinks is the pain of the Guru because the Guru has realized the blessings of pain. The Guru prays for pain. There was a Guru, he prayed to God, he said, God, the whole week has passed, but you have not given me a painful experience. Have you forgotten me? The Guru knows the value of pain. He knows the value of suffering. Therefore, it is not easy, I think, to take on oneself the pain of the Guru. The Guru doesn't want to leave it. Of Rabia, it is said, the woman saint of Islam, Sadhu Vaswani, called her the Mira of Islam. Once she had an attack of fever, the fever would not leave her. Then a friend of hers, Sufya by name, said to her, Rabia, every day Allah, God comes to you, you speak to God, why don't you ask him to take away this fever, to cure you of fever? And Rabia said to Sufya, Sufya, don't you know who has sent me this fever? God has sent me this fever. This is a gift of God to me. If a friend gave a gift to a friend, and the friend who was to receive the gift refused to receive the gift. How would the first friend feel who had brought the gift? This is a gift which God has given to me. Let him continue to give it. The Guru realizes the blessing of pain, of ill health and the like experiences. If you like, we can have one more question. Thank you, Dada. Dearest Dada, what is your one wish for the world? My one wish for the world would be, I have never thought of it as such. But this is a very tantalizing question. My one wish for the world would be that we all should will what God wills. Let our wills be the will of God. then everyone will be happy. 
It is because we have rebellious wills that we become unhappy. Our Holy One has said, our wills are our own so that we may make them thine. All we have to do is to see that our wills synchronize with the will of God. Thank you. Thank you, Dada, for the most wonderful question and answer session. I'm sure each one of us is going to walk out of this hall w much lighter and much more directed in our lives. Thank you so much. You are moving out of the hall, but you continue to be in my heart. Thank you. Prabhu Teri Hi Kripa Se Sab Kaam Ho Raha Hai Karte Ho Tum Prabhu Ji Mera Naam Ho Raha Hai Prabhu Teri Hi Kripa Se सब काम हो रहा है तकलीफ और तंगी में नूरी एक तू ही मददगार उठाए है अंजलि के जन्मों के सारे बार करता नहीं मैं कुछ भी सब काम हो रहा है करते हो तुम ओ दादा मेरा नाम हो रहा है प्रभु तेरी ही कृपा से सब काम हो रहा है